All right, welcome to Pythagorean Theorem Day. So uh, if you guys remember Pythagorean Theorem, the old A squared plus B squared equals C squared um, only works in right triangles, and you have to only be referring to the three sides. So just so we're aware of the letters here, okay? The side, like side A, is always located across from the angle. So across from angle A, you'll find side A, okay? Similarly, across from angle B, we'll find side B. And then across from angle C, we'll find side C. So if we had a triangle, we called it D, E, F. Side F is always across from uh, angle F. Side E is always across from angle E. And side D is always across from uh, angle D. The sides also get lowercase letters and the angles get capital letters. So just for reference moving forward here. Um, and then our formula, remember, is the sum of the two legs squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, okay? We can keep that in mind as we work along here. And the normal formula you see is C squared equals B squared plus B squared equals C squared. And this is normally when we're trying to find the hypotenuse, okay? If we're trying to find a leg, we can actually subtract um, B squared from both sides and end up with the formula of c squared minus b squared is equal to a squared. And so this will help us find a leg fairly easily because it's just a squared, which is one of the legs. All right, so going down the line here, Pythagorean triples are just uh, a set of three whole numbers, so just three whole numbers that always work in the Pythagorean theorem. They're always the sides of right triangle. So 3, 4, 5 is 1, 5, 12, 13. 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. You can also double and triple these. So if I were to get 6, um, 8, and 10, this will also work in the Pythagorean theorem. 36 plus 64 is 100, which is 10 squared. And I could also like multiply by 3 and get 12, uh, 9, and then 9, 12, 15. And so if you're going to use these, um, normally what you would just do is just show that like 5 squared plus 12 squared is equal to 13 squared when you're writing your statement here. So, all right, let's look at the letter A. So let's find the length of the hypotenuse. So I have uh, side B and side A here. And so if we do our formula, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, we're just going to plug in. So 21 squared plus 20 squared is equal to C squared. All right. And then we would just use our formula or our calculator if we need to. Okay, we'll open up a new one so we can get used to this. So, uh, calculator. And then we can do 20 squared plus 21 squared. Or if you want to do them individually, you can. It's 841. So, this is 441 plus 400. Okay, which uh, is essentially 841. And then we just take the square root of this, and we end up with 29. And so remember, on your calculator, just control square root, 841, enter, and there's our answer. Now, we also can do is um, type in the square root, and then we're going to just do 20 squared plus 21 squared this way, okay? And you can just do that in one easy step. So as long as you're showing your uh, your plug-in step, you can get right to your answer. All right. The next one is in simplest radical form. So we're going to drop down to finding a leg. Um, and you can see this one says simplest radical form. So I can tell here that I know it's not going to work out to be a whole number. Okay. So what we're going to do here is do the same thing. Here's A, leg, leg, hypotenuse. And so if I use my formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, all right, that leaves me with x squared plus 8 squared, which equals 20 squared. And we can solve, um, solve this way, okay? Or if we use our formula, b squared, uh, c squared minus b squared equals a squared, I can do 20 squared minus 8 squared, okay, is equal to 8 squared, and then I can just take the square root, and so this just speeds up my process. Here, 
I'm going to have to square things, right? And get 64 and then move this over. And here I don't necessarily have to. So when we do square root this, we should get 400 minus 64. So 20 squared, right? Minus 8 squared. And so it's 336. And this is not uh, a perfect square. Because when I take my calculator and do the square root of 336, we can also hit up arrow and grab that answer. You can see I get a crazy decimal, which I don't want to leave as my answer. So now we're going to go back to menu, number, factor, and then 336. And I end up with four twos, a three, and a seven. So this equals two, 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 a three, and a seven. I take out my pairs. Remember, the twins escaped, but only one survives. You bring out one, two from each set, and this leaves me with four square root of 21. And I can check that that's the answer by just plugging in four square root. Square root. Oh, man. Let's get rid of you guys. All right, 21. And if I get the same decimal as I the original, then I know that this is, uh, that's my answer. Okay, we're gonna also going to do B here because we have radicals. So one leg of the right triangle is 6 radical 2. The hypotenuse is 8 radical 15. Find the length of the other leg. So we're going to use our C squared minus B squared formula. And this time, I'm going to put my hypotenuse in for C. Now I need to use these, uh, I need to plug in and I need to use parentheses. If I don't, you're going to see we're going to get two different answers here, okay? Minus 6 radical 2 squared is equal to a squared. Now, what this means is when I square it is I'm multiplying it times itself. So I'm really doing 8 radical 15, okay, times 8 radical 15. And so 8 times 8 is 64. And then radical 15 squared just turns into 15. So this is actually 64 times 15. But if I, and so that's what happens when you use parentheses here, okay? If I don't use parentheses, what the calculator thinks is I'm just doing 8 times the square root of 15, right, times the square root of 15. I'm only squaring the radical, and so I'm not doing the, the 8 twice. So you just got to be careful here. All right, so we're going to use our parentheses. Parentheses first. Okay. And we're going to do 8 square root of 15, move outside. And I mean, I have these instead of parentheses, but it's not a big deal, uh, squared. And then minus, and now we also have 6 radical 2 squared. So 6 radical 2 outside parentheses here. I'm going to make sure we open them on that guy, squared. And you can see I get... 888 here and so if I square root 888 now it's rounding for me um, I don't I don't want to type in so there's a little error here because it's telling me that it's um, multiplying by scalar identity basically what happens is it's it's it's, it's not writing 888 it's writing 887.9 and all the way through so the calculator can be a little weird sometimes. Um, if this does happen, okay, all we really want to do is just when we do there, this, we want to just type in 888. And you can see it doesn't work out to be a whole nice number. So we're going to have to do our, um, our perfect square here thing again. Okay. Um, so this is all that's happening for this question. We're doing six times 8 squared times 15, so 64 times 15. If you guys can remember that, um, it makes it a lot easier to do this question. We'll go over this in class tomorrow. That's 960, and then 6 squared is 36 times 2, so minus, okay, um, I already jumped up there, uh, 36 times 2, okay, and you can see that's where the 80, 888 comes from. All right. And then we want to do the same thing with the factor. So we go to menu, number, down the factor. 
we type in 888, and we get two, three twos, a three, and a 37. So this turns into the square root of 888, okay? And then three twos, a three, and a 37. Take out a set of twos. So two, and then we have a two, a three, and a three. Two times three times 37. Oh, 37. Leaves us with 222. So it's two radical 222. All right. Okay, so that's it. Essentially just solving for the leg. We're just going to use our formula here, okay, um, when we plug in. And then we are just going to make sure that um, if it's a radical, we're going to use parentheses. And then when we get a number, if we type in the square root on our calculator and we get a decimal, that we have to make sure that we um, use our factor and leave it in um, simplest radical form. All right, go to the next page here. All right, number three, uh, using Pythagorean theorem to prove it's a right triangle. So if I want to uh, prove that this is the right triangle, I'm going to identify my three sides, which one's the hypotenuse, which ones are the legs. So remember, I know that the hypotenuse is always the longest side, and that means these other two, doesn't matter which one, either A or B, uh, represents the other two sides. So what I want to do is do is check to see, does A squared plus B squared equal C squared? So 85 squared versus 13 squared plus 84 squared. And so if I take my calculator, just do 85 squared is 7,225. And if I do 13 squared plus 84 squared, do I get the same answer? And so if these are equal, then yes, it is a right triangle. Because 85 squared is equal to 13 squared plus 84 squared. All right. And if they're not equal, then you would say it's not a right triangle. Now, you also, beyond checking for whether or not it is um, a right triangle, you can tell whether or not it's acute or obtuse. So an obtuse triangle is where the C squared is bigger, and acute is where the A squared plus B squared is bigger. So I always remember if the A squared side is bigger, it's going to be acute, and if the C squared side is bigger, it's going to be obtuse. That's how I kind of remember uh, which which switch to go. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did before. The largest side is C, and then these other two are A and B. And so we're going to check 14 squared. We're going to check 6 squared plus 11 squared, and we're going to see what we get. Okay, so 14 squared, all right, and then 6 and 11. So 6 squared plus 11 squared, we get 157. So we get this is 196, okay? And this is 157. And now we know we can put uh, the bigger here. And so we can say this is obtuse. All right. Since A squared plus B squared, since C squared, right, is bigger than that. All right. And do the same thing with here. So here we're going to do a couple other questions. One's involving a square and the diagonal for a square. So just remember when you draw yourself a square. The angles here are 90 degrees. So when I draw the diagonal in, I'm essentially creating a, a right triangle and it's isosceles. So these two sides we're going to call X. And so um, this is the hypotenuse. So these are the two legs. So if I know the side length, okay, then instead of writing X, I'm going to write 3 radical 5 on both. And now I'm looking for the length of the hypotenuse, so we could call that x. So x squared is going to equal, right, parentheses, remember, don't forget that, with the radical, plus, and now we're just going to solve this. All right, and if it's the other way around, and I'm looking for, and I know the length of the hypotenuse, um, which might be a question on here. Nope. 
but we can do it anyways. Let's say the hypotenuse is 3 to the radical 5. Um, so this is just a hypothetical here. Okay, here's my square, right angle. This is 3 radical 5. I'm going to call this x and x. So now I'm going to do x squared plus x squared is equal to parentheses 3 radical 5 squared. So if you have the hypotenuse um, or you have the diagonal of a square, which represents the hypotenuse, it goes in for C. And these two sides we're going to call x. And essentially it just equals 2x squared. And so you're just going to solve this by dividing both sides by 2 and then taking the square root. Okay. Here you're just going to combine these like terms and then take the square root of whatever that fun stuff ends up being. Okay, that's it here, guys. Um, number two, when you want to find the height, um, remember the height is drawn perpendicular. And because this is isosceles, um, when we draw the height in, it is going to create a right angle. And it is also going to chop this in half. It becomes the perpendicular bisector. Because isosceles, um, we know that these angles are equal. And we could use hypotenuse like here. Uh, to get the triangles congruent. So just keep that in mind as we work along. All right, guys. Um, good luck. Finish the rest of the worksheet. We'll go over it on Monday. Uh, we'll have a little uh, more questions to do with um, Pythagorean theorem on Monday as well. And I'll see you guys then.